Hey, sweetheart. I'm here at my mom's place, and things are not looking good. The house is a mess, and she's been struggling in for the past few days. She's hardly talking, and I can sense that my father's passing has hit her hard. It's tough to see her like this. I suggested going out and doing something, but she wouldn't even budge from bed. It's been a few weeks since we lost dad, and I hoped she'd at least start to feel a bit better. Oh no! I'm so sorry to hear that. It must be incredibly challenging for her. Maybe I can whip up something hearty and bring it over? We can all share a meal together. I'm sure it'll help alleviate some of her loneliness. Yeah, I appreciate you suggesting that. The idea of reducing her loneliness has been on my mind. I've actually been contemplating asking mom to stay with us for a little while, just until she starts feeling better. Besides, having her around might help with keeping her mind off things. The house is full of memories of dad, and I think it's best to give her a change of scenery for a while. Oh, absolutely. If you think it's what's best for her, then we should definitely have her stay with us for a while. Being close to you will undoubtedly lift her spirits, too. Thanks, honey. I'm really grateful for your understanding. No worries at all. I'll whip up some comforting dishes, and when you guys get here, we can all sit down for a heartwarming dinner. I'll also get a room ready for her. Thank you. You're amazing. I'll be there soon. Oh, you're such a caring son, honey. I'm so glad you're willing to take care of your mom and make her feel better. Hey, Lillian. I need you to help me buy something. Hi, Sandra. Yeah, sure. Do you need anything from the grocery store? I'll get it for you when I pass by the store soon. Yes, Lillian. I need you to buy me caviar from the store at Greenwood Street, one my husband used to go to. Just mention his name, and they will know what it's for. Remember, I don't want the one in the brown tin because they're cheaper and not something my taste buds would like. I want you to get the one in a small blue tin that is my favorite caviar. I want you to get three of them alongside some freshly baked bread. Remember, just a blue tin as it's the only one that would suit my taste buds. Anything else you buy will go into the trash. I'm sorry to ask. But may I know how much this caviar would normally cost? They sound extremely pricey. They're around $250 for one tin. Three of them, please. $250? I'm sorry, Sandra, but I'm afraid I can't afford to spend that much money on caviar. Me and Mikey are saving money up for the baby. And we're planning to renovate the baby's room before he's born, too. Are you saying that you won't buy me caviar then? Do you have any idea how much I've been wanting them? Are you joking with me? Is this how you treat your mother-in-law? No, it's not like that. I'd be more than happy to get you whatever you like. It's just... Caviar is a little bit too expensive for my budget. We don't have that much money. Even Mikey is struggling with his business. Oh, what a sad life I'm living. My husband, who I love dearly, who can take care of me so wonderfully, has passed away and nobody seems to care. My poor son is married to someone who can't even think of me as her own mother and buy me the things that I want. My wonderful husband brings me home caviar every week, and we would eat it together for breakfast and laugh together watching the television. Oh, how I miss my husband. <laughs> God, oh God, why is my life so difficult? I can't even get anything to remind me of my husband anymore because my daughter-in-law can't even afford it. Why didn't God just take me away instead of him? He was a good man. He deserves to live. 
I should be the one who died. Sandra, I'm so sorry. I don't know that it was something that you and your husband used to do. I didn't mean to make you feel this way. Oh, please don't say that. Michael needs you. He can't lose you after losing his father. I'm so sorry I made you feel this way. Look, let me see what I can do. Perhaps I can push certain plans for the baby. Don't worry about it. Would it be okay for me to purchase only one? Do you not get it, Lillian? Three is the right number. My husband would bring three packs per week for us to eat. Why are you trying to ruin a tradition? Just because he's dead doesn't mean I should forget about it. No, that's really not what I meant, Sandra. Don't worry. I'll try to see what I can do and get you the caviar. I'll see you at home. You better come back with those. Or else, what is the point of me living in this house if it only brings me nothing but misery? Hey, Lillian, where are you? I called you so many times and you haven't been picking up. Are you avoiding me or something? Hey, Sandra, I'm so sorry. I left my phone in my car when I went in the store. I really wasn't ignoring you. Is everything okay at home? Is there anything that you want me to bring home? I can bring home some lunch and we can eat together. If you haven't had anything yet for lunch. Yes, lunch would be great. I need you to buy me the pastrami sandwich from Big Mike's Diner. I want one without any extra sauce. For the cheese, I would only want Swiss cheese and provolone. I like only two slices of tomatoes, no less or more, as that's how my husband used to do it. Big Mike's Diner? As in the one that's two hours away from here? Yes. Where else will they be? Stop asking pointless questions and go get them for me. Don't mess up the order. Listen, Sandra, I'm sorry. And I'm not trying to be rude, but I don't think I can drive two hours to get the sandwich. Maybe we can ask Michael to get it in a time when he has free time. I have a doctor's appointment in an hour. If I get the sandwich, I won't make it to my appointment. I don't care about your doctor's appointment. You can do that anytime. Can't you reschedule? I really want the sandwich and I don't want to wait for another day just to eat them. I'm sorry, but I really can't. I can't just simply cancel my doctor's appointment. I need to check on the health of the baby, your grandson. Plus, I don't think it would be healthy for me to be driving that long when I'm seven months pregnant. Excuses after excuses. Don't be such a baby. When I was pregnant with Michael, I did all sorts of things and I am doing fine, and so is he. I know this is just one of those excuses you make so that you can make me more miserable than I already am. Why is it so hard for me to get the sandwich that my husband used to get for me? It's one of the memories left of him that can help me go through the day when things get hard. My husband would never make excuses like you. My poor son, Michael. I wonder how he survives living with you all these years. God, why won't he just take me away? I want to be dead with my husband. I don't want to live here with this horrible woman. Sandra, please don't say that. That is not true at all. I have nothing against you and I would never want to make you miserable. Please don't wish death upon yourself. Look, maybe I can go tomorrow. I'll be freer then. No! I already told you. I want it today. I've been thinking about it non-stop today. Are you trying to torture me by making me wait another day? 
My husband would never make me wait for things I really want. Oh God, why can't you just take me away too? Fine, Sandra. I'll cancel my doctor's appointment and I'll drive to the restaurant to get you the sandwich. Please stop wishing that you'll die. Michael would be so heartbroken to hear that. Be quick. Don't waste my time. Hey, Sandra? Were you at home all day yesterday? Yes? What is it now? Are you accusing me of stealing things in your house? What? No, that's not what I'm trying to say. I just want to ask you regarding the baby's room. You've seen it before. When you first came, we painted it blue because the baby's a boy, and we thought it would suit him. We even put up a lot of different toys that we thought the baby might like. You know where I'm going with this, don't you, Sandra? Hmm. The color is hideous. I don't feel good looking at it. And I believe the baby would feel the same way as me. What do you mean? The blue color of the room that you painted? It's hideous. It really doesn't suit the baby. It's better off with the current color. I love it more this time. So it was you who changed the color of the room without our permission. I'm sorry that I have to say this, but that is very disrespectful. That's my baby, and I deserve to know anything before you make changes to anything. Plus, this is my house. Just because we let you stay here doesn't mean you can make all the decisions that you like behind my back. Oh, I didn't know. I have to be asking permission to make changes in the house that my son lives in? What a disrespectful thing to say to me without me raising my son to be like the man he is. He wouldn't be here to be the good man for you. You should be more grateful that I even agreed to stay here. I don't understand what you're trying to say. I've been kind enough to let you stay here while you've been dealing with this death. And you're ruining it. How exactly am I ruining your healing for you? My husband hates the color blue. It reminded him of the big blue house he grew up in. It was an abusive household. We ensure to always eliminate the color blue from our house. I don't understand. Why can't you do the same? Look, I'm really sorry about what he went through. And I understand how it could be hard for him. But I still don't think it's right for you to apply the same rules to my house. It's not fair to me. Fairness? Is that all you care about? You think the world is fair when my husband is taken from me? No, that is not what I'm trying to say. That's enough. No need to speak to me. This conversation is making things harder for me, and I don't want to deal with it. Michael, we really need to have a serious conversation about your mom. I've already had an earful from her. Is it true that you told her she needs to ask for permission for everything? That seems pretty harsh, especially given what she's going through right now. Look, I completely empathize with what she's dealing with, but it's disheartening that I'm ending up as collateral damage in the process. Have you had a chance to hear my side of the story? She's been trying to take control of everything that I'm doing. You're making this much more complicated than it has to be. She's my mom, and I really need you to refrain from speaking about her like that. I'm just asking for a bit more understanding of her situation. She's navigating through a lot, and I'm hoping you can cut her some slack for a few more weeks until she gets back on her feet. Fine. I'll do it for you, and out of respect. 
but I hope you realize the challenges I'm facing in all of this. It's going to be Benedict Arnold Jr. Sorry? What are you referring to, Sandra? The child, of course. What? Are you talking about my baby? My son? Who else would I be talking about? The name of that child would be Benedict Arnold Jr. Wait, what are you trying to say? Sorry, Sandra, but that's not what I'm naming the baby. Mikey and I have already discussed the name. We will be naming the baby Harold, after my father, who did a lot for me growing up. I disagree. He should be named after my husband. Your second child can have your father's name if you want to, but the first one should honor my husband. This is our grandchild, after all. This is my father's first grandchild as well. If you like, we can put your husband's name as the baby's middle name. That's all I can offer to you. That's what I can agree with. Middle name? Is that all my husband is worth to you? All he ever wanted when he was alive was to have grandchildren. But you took too long to get pregnant. Now that he's gone, I want to at least have the child named after him. Is that so hard? At least your father is still alive. Isn't that enough for you? You know I have issues that made it hard for me to get pregnant. It's not like we did it on purpose. You think my father would only be appreciated when he passes away? I'm sorry, but it's not possible. I will not change the name of the baby just because you asked me to. You have no say. How rude of you to speak to me that way. Michael will know about this. You are being super disrespectful. That's not a way to speak to your mother-in-law. You know I'm still grieving. Sandra, I understand you're grieving. But my decision about the baby's name is not up for negotiation. We can discuss this calmly and find a compromise. But disrespectful accusations won't help anyone. What did you do now, Lillian? My mom just called me crying. Did she tell you what happened? Is it another made-up story on how I'm the villain who disrespected her and her grieving period? I already told you not to speak about my mom that way. When will you learn? Your mom tried changing the baby's name. She wants to name him after your father. We agreed we would name him after my father. Why is it such a big deal? Just change the name to Benedict Arnold Jr. as she asks. We will name the second child with your father's name. Isn't that easier than arguing non-stop? Are you kidding me? So you just stick to whatever your mom has to say. I told you, she's going through a hard time. She's trying to hold on to as many pieces of memories as she can of my father as much as possible. You won't understand. Why? Because my father is still alive, and therefore I should never appreciate him, and I should only care for yours because he's already passed? Let's be real. You never really cared about your father anyway when he was alive. Are you expecting me to do the same? How dare you say that to me? You're being overdramatic. How could you disrespect your mother-in-law just because you want things to go your way? <laughs> of course I want things to go my way. This is my child. I'm done talking to you. Unless you calm down and come to your senses, then don't speak to me. Gladly. I will be in the labor room with you since that is my grandchild. 
I love to be the first to hold it as well. I'm telling you this now so you won't come up with excuses later or about your planning. Just like when I asked you to change the name. Sorry, Sandra, but I can't let you in the labor room with me. It's going to be a very vulnerable moment for me. So I would prefer to have my mother and my husband in it instead. You'll be able to see the baby after he's born. How could you? I am the child's grandmother. I deserve to be there to see it. You don't get to kick me out. Sorry, Sandra, but I really won't be able to let you in. I'm not comfortable with having you in it. I prefer to have my own mother. I know what this is all about. You're still hating on me because of what happened. Look, Sandra, I don't care about those anymore. I forgive you for changing the baby's room, for making me do things that are too hard for pregnant women, and for trying to change the name of the baby. I want to give birth without all this negativity. Oh no, it's not that. You're mad at me because your husband loves me more than he loves you. What? I never thought about it that way. Of course you did. You've always been the jealous kind. You are always so visibly upset that he would choose me over you. He loves me more than anything. He's your son. It doesn't matter how much he loves you. His life will always be with me. What are you trying to say? No. He's always going to be mine. You stole him from me. And now you're stealing my grandson from me. I will never let you do that. <laughs> you're out of your mind. I hope he divorces you. You're a selfish bitch. What the heck is wrong with you? You made my mom cry again. What did I even do wrong? Your mother is obsessed with you and our baby. What the heck does that even mean? You're losing your mind, Lillian. I'm carrying our child. And I've been so stressed since your mom came to live with us. And the hell that she put me through. You never cared. You always sided with her, even though it's obvious that she was wrong. How dare you? She's going through a lot. <laughs> Enough with that bullshit. None of you guys cared that much about your father when he was alive. I was the only one who visited him. Your mother hated him. Why are you pretending like you don't know that? Don't you dare speak about my parents that way. They were in love. They were perfect together. You are out of your mind. How dare you? You don't belong in this house. No one should disrespect my parents that way. That's it. I'm done with you. We're getting a divorce. I will gladly leave this house if it means I don't have to deal with you or your mom anymore. What are you even doing? Moving all your things into my house and locking me out? You don't deserve to even step your dirty feet in here. Come back and take all your things with you. Sorry, you mean my house? Can you please stop trying to open the door? Or else I'm going to have to call the police on you. Please leave. Are you out of your freaking mind? This is the house that my husband and I have been living in forever. It's my house now that he's dead. Get out and let me in. How do you even have the key? You thief. Oh, you must have not heard. Heard what? Get out. Your husband wrote to me on his will that once he passed, this house would be passed down to me. You don't get a cent of his money. 
You can stop pretending now, Sandra. You never cared for him. You were abusive to him. You even brainwashed Michael to hate him. Initially, I thought it was guilt that changed you, but I figured it out. It was all an act. You don't care that he died. You only care about his money. What? That's impossible. Why would he give it to you and not me? That's ridiculous. Is it though? I took care of him like he was my own father. I cared for him more than you and Michael did. Oh, that poor guy. He died knowing that you are all going to be chasing his money. If you have any issues with the will, please contact his lawyer. They will explain everything to you. But for now, please leave me alone and leave my property. Or else I'll call the police on you. Wait. No. Lillian, listen. It wasn't an act. I do care for him. I care for you too. You're the best daughter-in-law. I'm sorry for everything. <laughs> I knew you would say this. Enough. And leave my property. The police are on their way. Honey, I'm really sorry. How did I ever miss this? You are just like your mother. Even your apology disgusts me. It's all about money, isn't it? No. You know how much I love you. My mother, she got into me. But I know better now. I know better now too. I know not to trust someone like you and your mother. Leave. A few weeks after that, the divorce between Lillian and Michael is finalized. Lillian was able to get full custody of her baby, and she was also able to live comfortably thanks to inheritance that her father-in-law passed down to her. On the other hand, Sandra was still in disbelief that her husband didn't pass anything to her because of his will. She even tried breaking into the house a few times, but was caught by police. As for Michael, he has been struggling a lot after the divorce, as he realized how true the things that Lillian has always said about his mother are. But yet, he is still stuck with her, as she has nowhere to live. Both grew to hate each other and blame each other for the misfortune. <laughs>